Okay, good afternoon, everybody. So I'm going to present the work we are doing in the division to monitor and study the meridional returning circulation in the Atlantic Ocean. So we observe the MOC uh, because it is responsible for redistributing large amounts of water, heat, uh, salt, carbon, nutrients, other substances around the world ocean. And the focus of our lab is on the Atlantic MOC and for the AMOC, and it is particularly important because it is responsible for about two-thirds of the oceanic northward heat transport. And by doing so, it impacts global and regional climate and has also influence on the regional sea level variability, extreme weather events, ecosystems, and fisheries. So we are monitoring the AMOC in both the North and South Atlantic, and one of the main AML's contributions to the AMOC observing is by measuring the Florida current transport with a submarine cable that started back in 1982. And now we provide the longest continuous record of a boundary current transport. The advent of new technology, in particular satellite altimetry and Argo profilers, and also the use of multi-year in situ observations have made it possible to combine satellite and in situ data in order to derive the MOC and regional heat transport estimates at different latitudes. So we uh, um, we need to uh, directly uh, monitor AMOC uh, led to the establishment of the first ever transbasin AMOC observing array at 26.5 north in the North Atlantic. It was established in 2004 in partnership with the University of Miami National Oceanographic Center in the UK. And this particular latitude was selected in order to leverage the already existing measurements of the Florida current and also because this is about the latitude of the maximum northward oceanic heat transport in the Atlantic Ocean. The AMOC anomalies we observe in the North Atlantic may originate in the South Atlantic and even beyond in the Southern and Indian Oceans. And it's been shown that freshwater flux into the South Atlantic may uh, control the AMOC stability. So in order to monitor inter-ocean exchanges, the South Atlantic MOC basin wide Mutare or Samba was established in 2009 at uh, 34.5 uh, degrees south latitude. And it was done in partnership with our colleagues from France, South Africa, Argentina, and Brazil. So what have we learned about the AMOC? So first of all, it turned out that the AMOC is highly variable, changing on time scales from a few days to interannual. And as you can see in these two plots, there is lack of coherency between the North and South Atlantic MOC. In 2009, 2010, we observed a 30% uh, reduction in the AMOC northward uh, transport at 26.5 North, which actually exceeded the range of interannual variability found in climate models. So all this indicates that continuous monitoring is necessary to avoid aliasing of high frequency variability and also to identify any possible climate related trends. And this is mainly due to our multi-year observations at 26.5 north that it became possible to determine that the North Atlantic Ocean might be in a state of reduced overturning since 2008 as compared to the four preceding years of observations. Because the AMOC driven heat divergence controls regional uh, redistribution of ocean heat, it's been shown that the AMOC is largely responsible for the interannual sea level variability along the U.S. southeastern seaboard and also along the eastern boundary of the North Atlantic, including the Mediterranean Sea. So continuous monitoring of the AMOC at 26.5 north can potentially be used to improve our coastal sea level predictions. And in the South Atlantic, using a suite of hydrographic and satellite data, we have obtained the first estimates of the South Atlantic Meridional Heat Transport, and it's been shown that both density and wind-driven components are important contributors to the Meridional Heat Transport, but their relative contribution varies with latitude and time. So one of the main, uh, uh, most important reasons why our, our observations are valuable is because they are widely used to validate ocean and climate models, which often fail to reproduce the mean and the variability of the AMOC and its components so that continuous observations are necessary to um, improve um, model physics. And in conclusion, um, so since 1982, uh, the PhD authors and co have published around 180 MOC-related papers, and this is the result of our sustained and 
uh, long-term collaboration with uh, partners in the institutions from seven different countries, including the United States. Thank you very much. And I would like to introduce our next speaker, uh, Dr. Shin Fudong. Uh, 